We live in a world where the values tend to focus on wealth, status, praise, sensual pleasures. And one of the purposes of having a monastery and coming to a monastery is to remind us that there are other things more important in life, that the values of the world can be pretty hollow, and they're not very dependable. Wherever there's wealth, there's loss of wealth, status, loss of status. Where there's praise, there's criticism. Where there's pleasure, there's pain. These things go around and around, just like the world itself. And they provide no real nourishment. There's a famous American novel, The Great Gatsby, where the main character has been pursuing someone who has wealth, status, praise, pleasure. And he sees that it's all denied to him. Then he looks around and all those things suddenly seem totally meaningless. Totally alien. And when people feel alienated like that, it's very easy to go into despair. Which is why we need an alternative set of values to remind us that there are actually good things in life, worthwhile things in life. And they're worth putting forth an effort. One of the strange features of American society is what used to be called the gospel of relaxation. It started up in the late 19th century, where people were told that Americans are too tense, they're too driven, they need to relax, rest, appreciate just being in the present moment. We've had that ever since. And when Buddhism comes to America, a lot of it has fallen into that mode, as if the good things in life require no effort at all, or learning how to do no effort, which is pretty hopeless, because you can rest only for so long. And then you have to eat. You need food, clothing, shelter, medicine. And these things don't come simply by resting in the present moment. So you go back to work. But the drama actually provides an alternative set of values. And they require work, but they're values that provide you with something that's really substantial, something that does provide genuine nourishment for the mind. And it can lead ultimately to a place where you're not let down, because the Dharma has its own version of wealth, status, praise, and pleasure, but in ways that are totally harmless and very reliable. The wealth, of course, is noble wealth. It starts with conviction that the quality of the mind state with which you act is really important. If you act with skillful intentions, the results are going to be good. You're convinced of that. If you act with unskillful intentions, the results are going to be bad. This is very different from what the world tells us. Success in their eyes can often come from being very devious. But the Buddha says genuine success, genuine well-being, requires that you start with a good heart, that you desire to harm nobody, you have goodwill for all. And you take that good intention and then you work on it to make it skillful. This involves developing other forms of noble wealth. A sense of shame, a sense of compunction. Shame here meaning the healthy kind of shame that's the opposite of shamelessness. Compunction is the realization that if you do something unskillful, it's going to cause, cause suffering. So why bother? Why do it? You have the choice not to do it. And then there's the wealth of virtue, where you abstain from harming anybody at all. You hold to the precepts. That's your ex expression of giving safety to everybody. 
And when you give safety to everybody in that way, you're not going to kill, you're not going to steal, you're not going to have illicit sex, you're not going to lie to them, you're not going to get intoxicated, do stupid things. Then you have a share in that safety too. And there's learning, generosity, discernment. These are all good things. Good wealth, solid wealth, reliable wealth. So if you're looking for someone who's rich, if you want to be wealthy yourself, this is where you should look. As for status, it doesn't come from having a lot or being put in a position of power outside. It comes from having power over your own mind, your own ability to say no to your defilements. The more you can let go of your attachment, the more you can let go of your cravings and clingings, the higher the level of your mind. The more you can bring the mind to concentration, the higher the level. That kind of status is genuine. Now again, it really is nourishing for the mind and for the heart. As for praise, the Buddha says we try to develop the precepts that are pleasing to the Noble Ones. In other words, we hold to the precepts, but not in a way where we think that we're better than other people, and not in a way where we get worked up and anxious over little details. As just, the Buddha says, we hold to them in a way that's untorn, but at the same time is conducive to concentration. The fact that they're untorn means that we hold to them all the time. The fact that they're conducive to concentration means that you hold, them, hold to them in a way that puts the mind at ease. That, the Buddha says, is praiseworthy. And then finally there's the pleasure that comes from concentration. All you have to do is breathe and focus on your breath, and learn how to stay with the breath, learn how to relate to the breath in a way that gives rise to a sense of ease, well-being, refreshment, even rapture. And then it can lead to the higher levels of well-being, the happiness of the deathless. which is the ultimate wealth, the ultimate status, the ultimate thing that's praiseworthy, as we chant every day. Those who practice well, those who practice straightforwardly. The Sangha of the Noble Ones, the Buddhist Sangha. You get praised every day all over the world. So there are things that are worth working for. We're not here just to relax, rest. Enjoy the present moment. We're here to use the present moment in a way that's, that gives genuine results, that does provide for human safety, that does provide for a well-being that is not dangerous. Because the well-being of the world is very dangerous. When you gain wealth, you gain status, it can go to your head. Again, praise in the world. People in the world will praise almost anybody. They'll praise almost any activity you'll find, even the most horrible actions, there'll be somebody to praise you. But when you're praised by the noble ones, that's really worthwhile. And as I said, the, the pleasure that comes from concentration harms no one. It's totally an inward thing. So these things re require effort, but the effort is well worth it. And we want to build our values around these things, because these are not values that are true only in the monastery. Simply that in the monastery they're recognized, they're encouraged. When you leave the monastery, you have to think about how to encourage yourself, because the world out there certainly is not going to encourage it. It's going to want to pull you back to their, their versions of wealth, status, praise, and pleasure. So you have to be really solid. This is why we talk about taking refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The Pali word refuge, sarana, can also mean something to keep in mind, something you keep recollecting all the time. That should be your recollection. There's a passage in the canon where Mahanama 
as one of the Buddha's cousins, is concerned. The Buddha spent the rains retreat near him. He was able to listen to the Dharma every day. Now the Buddha's going to go away at the end of the rains. He's concerned, what should I do? How do I maintain this dwelling of my mind, the dwelling that's built of the values of the Dharma? And the Buddha says, you recollect the Buddha, you recollect the Dharma, the Sangha. You keep in mind your virtue and your generosity. You keep in mind the qualities that can make a person a deva. Hold on to those values. in spite of what the world has to say, as you keep these things in mind. Then you have a better idea of what's worth working for in the world. I mean, there are activities in the world, there's work in the world, that actually is good for the mind. It develops persistence, it develops endurance, it develops determination, equanimity. So you look for that kind of work. But you do it for the purpose of your true well-being. That's something you always have to keep in mind. So while you're here, take advantage of the opportunity to develop these skills. While you're out there, carry these values with you. Remind yourself of the kind of wealth that really is worthwhile, the kind of status. The praise, the pleasure that really is worthwhile. Don't get waylaid by the, the world's versions of these things. When you can keep these values in mind, that's a lot of the practice right there.